Hi, I'm Marinus Kariman and welcome to Ziri Zemin. In this episode, you're going to meet three artists from different musical and cultural backgrounds who have come together to fuse the music from the West with music from their countries of heritage. At the same time, they've created a group of collaborators, or a tribe as they call it, to influence the trend of the music industry and also to help shape society in a positive manner. Brooklyn Shanti began freestyle rapping at a very young age. He started getting noticed by many big names in the hip hop industry, which worried his Indian immigrant parents. Although Brooklyn Shanti is shaped by his traditional Indian Bengali roots, he has been equally fueled by his love of music and has utilized these two distinct sides to create his own unique identity. My name is Nadeem, better known as Brooklyn Shanti. I am an artist. I think the best description would be digital media artist. But I started as a freestyle rapper, moved on to being a music producer, programmer, and now I just make things out of pixels and sound bits. The first toy that my dad gave me was an old computer. He took it apart and he said, if you can put it back together, you can have it. A week after school, I toiled, toiled, figured things out bit by bit. It was only through dumb luck that I put this thing back together. That opened up the universe of technology to me. By the time I was nine, he had me programming a little bit. My father, being a government scientist, was very privy about how things were developing, and he could see it coming around the bend, and he encouraged that kind of curiosity in me, and he wanted it to battle my natural inclination to make art. When I was growing up and just a child, I fell in love with art of freestyle. And at that point in time, it was only black kids from the hood, Puerto Rican kids. It wasn't rich kids from suburbs or whatever. By far, it was not Indian kids who had immigrant parents. So my parents, they were like WTFs. They couldn't see a reason for A, why I had this skill, or B, why I even wanted to display that kind of artistic acumen. They flipped out because of the perfect conditions coming together between black culture thriving within the context of hip hop and spreading that message virally through art and America lurching back and forth. Is hip hop good? Is it bad? Is it good? Is it bad? My parents didn't want to get into the politics of it. They just wanted me to stop. But I was studying the greats like Africa Bambada and the native tongue and I was young, young, young. It left a different imprint on me. <laughs> Close to the end of high school, I got in trouble and my parents sent me to India. A family in India didn't have nine-tenths of the opportunity that I had. Having the audacity to sit there and say, I'm gonna be an artist, I'm gonna be a rapper, I'm gonna be this, I'm gonna, I'm going to be, me, me, me. It was all America coming to them. And they threw it back on my face and said, that is, so not what this is for us. If we don't get this score on this exam, it's gonna be a street sweeper. You either compete for these grades or you literally die. That experience more than humbled me, it changed me forever because I started questioning why I was given that opportunity. When my cousins are working so hard, why is it that I was given this luxury? And then I started questioning my identity. I started thinking to myself, well, not only am I different here in America because you know I'm this Indian kid that doesn't have an identity, but now I'm different different than Indians too because I always thought if I went back to India and went there I would be Indian but no I'm not that either well I'm actually nothing now I have no heroes on my walls I have no posters that look like me and that's when I realized I've got to be somebody in my life that can make people like me comfortable with who they are 
When Gecko Jones first became involved with music, he realized there was a lack of fusion in the types of music he was interested in. Visiting his mother country of Colombia often, Gecko fuses the folk music there with the rave music he grew up with in the United States and now has become one of the biggest promoters and DJs in New York City. So I'm Gecko Jones, I'm a producer here in New York City. I put together events for the Latino market mostly. But we work with very traditional folkloric artists and up and coming artists that are rooted in, in kind of folkloric sounds to recreate like a new club sound that is in, infused by those older ideas so as not to make like square Dr. Roboto music which seems to be a going theme these days. I actually started doing events in New York City because I'd been here for a few years and I hadn't come across very much that was doing like the ethno-techno kind of uh, fusion sounds. Uh, there wasn't an event that was like dance music oriented around that, that was as open in, in its ideology as my listening was. So I kind of went down that road and started doing my own events to create that scene in New York. And, a few years down the line, I've had some pretty successful parties, and uh, I'd say, you know, we've had an influence on the scene, you know. I had the Quebajo party here in New York that's pretty much known for the best fusion of tropical bass sounds. My partner, he specializes in Balkan and Latin stuff. And, you know, we both have a love of African music, and together we're kind of creating one of those few parties where you walk in and it's like wall-to-wall -wall dancing. Uh, I feel like people don't dance no more. All they do is this, you know. A lot of my influences stem from Colombia and South America. Like the percussion down there just resonates with me. It's very rooted in African traditions. Every time I go out there, I do a lot of uh, digging for old stuff and find inspiration in the music that I find out there. I'm a person that takes pride in cultural heritage. Rather than being completely assimilated by American culture, I want there to be like a rise of a Latino element in culture. And so, you know, I struggle very hard to try and keep a folkloric and traditional theme throughout my work that makes people kind of turn toward the past and uh, analyze where we come from and where a lot of uh, our influences lie. Just like Brooklyn Shanti and Gecko Jones, Jadon Blackamore's influences lie in his heritage. But Jadon, a reggae and dubstep artist, also finds significance in how music can unify people from different backgrounds. His passion and integrity have allowed him to work with well-known artists such as Diplo and Snoop Lion, formerly known as Snoop Dogg. Baby, I'm ready when you're ready. I know you want the one for me. Yeah, my name is Jadon Blackamore. I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, designer. I was born in Guyana, South America, and I'm based in New York City at the time. Nobody move, nobody can talk. Nobody move, nobody can walk. I got involved in music quite early. Gospel music was my first encounters with music and that led to soca and reggae and everything else. But I didn't necessarily know that I was going to be a musician, but I felt very inspired by music from a young age. I came to the States in the early 80s. I was very inspired by rap music. I started break dancing and popping and doing all the things that my homies were doing. I come from a Caribbean culture. I was born in South America, in Guyana. It's not necessarily considered part of the Caribbean, but it is, and the culture is very much identical. Obviously, I go in the direction of my cultural expression, but I always think, who's this music gonna reach? I wanna include everyone, because everyone will meet on the dance floor. They'll be from many different places, but you want them to identify one thing, which is the groove, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you have a lot of different people listening to different musics that are sharing and culturally sharing vibration, sharing expression. My dad told me pretty much, you have to dig deep. And he said to me, what are the two most important days in your life? The day you were born and the day you found out why you were born. But once you figure out your purpose, you're activated. You understand what the mission is. You will be responsible. You will have compassion. You will have a conscience with what you do because you know why you're doing it. Every artist, every creative mind should try to at least keep their mind there, you know. Free up. You free up yourself to express and to get whatever you're going to get from the, the cosmos. But with that responsibility, it makes it easier. The people stand for peace. War them a promote. Them bombs still a blow. Them guns still a smoke. We the people stand for peace. War them a promote.
Brooklyn Shanti, Gecko Jones, and Jadon Blackmore's artistic styles may seem very different, but they have one very important thing in common. All three believe that collaboration among different musical genres and cultures will propel music and society forward. As a result, these three are a part of Jetty Arts, a larger collection of artists based out in Brooklyn, New York. This tribe they have formed together shows how a passionate, loyal few can accomplish a lot in this world. I met Gecko Jones about almost like 10 years ago. I was doing a show in Williamsburg and Jones was there. I wasn't really feeling what was going on in the back room, so I came back out front and this reggae singer was on stage. I like sat down and ordered a beer, you know, and like watched the rest of his set and was just blown away. And he was at my show tonight there and um, he approached me afterwards to get a dub plate. I sent my girlfriend at the time, I was like, yo, go get that guy's number, like bat your eyelash, do whatever you need to do and like get me that dude's number. He came up to us a little bit later in the night, kind of like, so are you guys a couple? And you know, that's pretty much how I met Jadan. He was like, yo, man, I got this idea. I want you to jump on this beat here, man. I know you do dub plates, right? And he was like, yo, what you doing tonight after the show? He said, yo, man, how'd you like to come to the studio right now? and..." We're gonna do some things, we're gonna knock out some work. And I was like, all right. I said, you wanna do it right now? All right, let's go. Free up the people and come out of your Receive your democratic, psychotic, social monopoly. Mr. Blackamore and I have spent a great deal of time together in the last few years. We recorded Buzz Rock Warrior in, in my living room and you know went on to become the iTunes reggae album of the year that year. And Gecko is one of the first people I met from the Dutty Arts crew. And he they pretty much introduced me to everybody else. I met Shanti through him. I found out that they were serious, a group of serious DJs, producers, party promoters that were really about setting a standard, you know. Brooklyn Shanti I met around the underground scene here in New York. And so here's this like Indian MC and get to know him a little better and see what his back catalog was and all the kind of things that he's involved in. He's like really brilliant, brilliant guy that works on a really higher plane than everybody is just very well versed in, it in several different fields. And so you, you feel like you're working with a very pro dude. In looking at people like Gecko Jones, who for America helps to voice the expression of the Latin majority, and he's distinguished as such, and has a connection with Colombia. Donda Jadan, who might not be the most famous reggae singer in the world, but he's one of the most connected. These are thought leaders culturally. This is a tribe, this is what they call it, a tribe, you know? It's like, we reach out to other tribes, but we have our circle and we know what we're bringing to the table, and we give and take and share. And, collaborate with other other entities. She's at the G Lay, sprinkles of Monet, cotton candy on a rainy day. She's New Delhi next with this New York boy that's gotten addicted. For me, bringing these people together is what I'm here for, because it'll advance us all in terms of who we are as a civilization. And we do it through art. There's not a politician who's going to do it for us. There's not a single corporation that's going to do it for us. It is we, the people, who are going to demand advancements and change and hack into or find in a renegade kind of way how we're going to express and communicate to those future generations. Music connects back to a particular origin. It's necessary in this time. I think it's going to bring people together and eventually we're going to change the world, we're going to heal the world through music and arts. The human spirit is what fosters innovation. There is a kid who's 12 years old somewhere in the Middle East or somewhere in China figuring something out that nobody else has thought about. And that voice is going to be heard over the rest of ours when their innovation and discovery get shared with the rest of the planet. Wherever you are, whatever your circumstance, push. Push to do what you feel is right. Push for the set level of expression that you feel is required of your soul because people will hear you. Don't listen to your parents. If they tell you that our culture can't facilitate this or you'll never make money, throw that out the window. Don't harm another human life, but at the same time, don't listen to people who want to detract you that don't understand your passion. And just do what feels right and you'll never be wrong and you'll live with no regret. Never go back, never go back. Oh, 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 oh. It's the time to laugh. Never, never turn back. Never turn and this is the end of our show. If you want more information about the artists and activists featured on Zir Zemin, make sure to check us out on one of our many social media outlets. Thanks for watching Zir Zemin. See you next time.
I talk for 10 minutes, maybe use like 45 seconds, okay. and then like, okay. it's cool. So do as I do. Not as I say. <laughs>